Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, at the outset, I would like to thank you for debating this short duration discussion on the rules 50 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct Business on the topic the degradation of roads, traffic management, and non compliance of transport laws in the States. Sir, the topic of the discussion is very vast, considering the needs of the people in the state, the vastness of the road network, the growing population, the growing number of vehicles, and also the need to ensure that laws prevail and the institutions that have been placed, they fulfill the requirement of law to ensure that our roads are protected and that the vehicles, especially the heavy vehicles that fly across the state, they comply with the rules in order to ensure the safety of the pedestrians, safety of vehicles that apply on the roads and also on the longevity of the roads across the state. Sir. So, the dilapidation of various roads, the delay in the repair and construction of the roads has been bringing huge losses to the people, sir. Their travel time has been affected. The cost of travel has gone up. Vehicles like the public uh, vehicles, like taxis, auto rickshaws, maxis, are getting damaged more frequently because of the roads not being repaired. So the slow progress in the implementation of various schemes, these are also being, they are affecting the schemes as well as affecting the people who are utilizing these roads, sir. Farmers, they have to spend more and more, sir. Women, especially pregnant women, the old, they are suffering due to bad roads. And transportation has become expensive due to poor road quality. As the transporters are charging the people more. So, the roads across Shillong, the roads in the National Highway, many village roads, unrepaired for many years, they have become a problem for the people, sir. Sir, I'd like to bring special notice to your Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, sir. Considering that this delay in repair and taking up of projects is costing the people dear, especially the roads from Bharambong to Nong Thumai to Mobuseng, the road from Nong Thumai to Umrali and onwards to Kundoso, sir. The roads from Kamara to Panthor. So today, based on a submission that I had made in proposal sent to the department on the road from Umtangling to Umlang Krau, 2.5 kilometers, 80 lakhs, still waiting sanction, and under process. So we had time and again requested the government for ensuring that there are multiple approach roads towards Shillong City and multiple exits in order to decongest the city. At the same time, to ensure that we protect the safety of the Umyam Dam. So the road approaching from Shillong towards the Shillong Bypass has been delayed, even though in the last session we were informed that around 50 crores were, was, was sanctioned and kept in place for the construction of this road. But then, so far, nothing has moved underground, sir. Sir, when we talk about the overall progress of roads across the state, especially the progress of the PMGSY2, many roads are still not yet completed. Right from 2018-19, 2019-20, when the work orders were issued, 
one particular load which people have given a submission to me, sir, on this Mausin Road subdivision, a road going from Nongjuri to Mausmai, lying pending for more than two to three years. People are suffering. Even though the work orders have been issued, but then the physical progress has been very, very poor. Sir, the traffic congestion in Shillong is eating away the resources. We are burning more fossil fuels. Pollution has gone up. We are denying people of the travel time, which should have been swift, but it is delayed because of the huge congestion in the city because of the vehicles. Sir, this has caused numerous problems to the people, especially when it comes to ensuring that their travel is economical and at the same time they can save on time when they go from one place to other across the city. Parents are, are getting their time wasted. People who are in service, when they have to go and fetch the students, they can't come back on time. The students are reaching their destinations late, whether they have to go for tuitions or they have to return to their homes or from their homes to their schools. They have to rush on foot. Sometimes when we see the small children, the kindergartens have to rush on foot. It is becoming difficult to ensure that their safety is there when they cross the city roads because of the huge congestion. Sir, so, the Umyam Dam has also been a cause of discussion and this particular topic of discussion has been there for past three to four years. Today in the start question when we had raised about the safety of the dam and whether any tests have been conducted, the state government had said in its reply, which could not come up for discussion, that the vibration levels of the vehicles that cross or that ply across the Umyam Dam, they are safe enough for the dam's longevity. So, we are not talking only about the vehicles that are plying across the Umyam Dam. We are talking also of the safety of the dam itself, considering the fact that it has already aged and the duration for which the dam's safety has been ensured for 50 years has expired. Now the material, whether it will withstand, whether the rods, whether the cement that have been used right on the day that the dam was commissioned, whether they are still safe for us now, that is the question whether the, not only the vibration levels of the vehicles are of concern, sir, even the dam itself is a concern. Because the constant pressure that the dam faces, because of the water levels that rise and also dip because of the water that either flows out or flows in into the Umyam Lake, that is one consideration that the government has to take into picture. Now, sir, Again, to ensure that the dam is safe and they are not subjected to heavy overloading. The overloading of vehicles has been a concern. We have raised this time and again, but again, the same reply we get and the same situation happens in the ground. No matter how many times we have raised this, but then still there is an apathy, a lack of apathy to, towards the kind of responsibility that we expect from the government. We, we hear that the load that has been restricted for vehicles that, or the trucks that have to pass, pass across the, uh, the Umyam Dam was around 10 metric tons. When I come back from my constituency, especially at night, I see some officers there near the Lad Umroy Junction. I don't know what those people are doing. But then we just see a long list of trucks, whether they have the mandate to check, because as per the reply that uh, was placed in the start question today, on the restrictions across the Umyam Dam, the government said there are no restrictions. But then why are those people there? 
Why are those people there? In the press, we are seeing a different kind of notification and releases and communication given to the people. Here on the floor of the house, we are seeing a different kind of reply. So we are confused as to whether any protective measure has been taken by the government to protect the dam because of the overloaded vehicles. A huge number of vehicles that go unchecked, the loads unchecked, that cross the Umyam Dam, sir. So therefore, sir, these concerns, especially on overloading, that are rapidly destroying the quality of roads, that is also putting at risk various physical infrastructures across the state. We have seen how the Dwarf Sur Bridge has been developed. Uh, broken down because of overloading. It is still happening, even though I'm thankful to the government, to the deputy CM, that they have already got the project cleared for the new bridge at um, Dwarak Soj, which is going under construction right now, sir. But, sir, what is more difficult to face is the people. People are, are blaming the MLAs for the poor conditions of the roads. Recently, our Honorable Deputy CM had publicly remarked that when projects get implemented, when people get good roads, nobody gives credit to our Honorable Deputy CM in charge of the roads. I stand here, sir, to give credit to him for two roads, especially which he has sanctioned on my request for the village of um, Lumshi Ab and Umkti. I thank him for the intervention and also for the support. But the question is, sir, now who will take responsibility for the bad roads? Sir, collectively, sir, the department, us as leaders, I think we have to move forward to ensure that the rapid dilapidation of the roads, the unrepaired roads across all the divisions, they be considered proactively by the government, sir. And the Honourable Deputy CM would definitely take all the honours for repairing these roads rapidly and also swiftly, sir. And if he can consider the, these unrepaired roads at the earliest, it will definitely bring relief to the people who have suffered a lot and also to ensure that the transportation costs, which is having a heavy bearing on the people and their savings, they be saved and considering the needs of our poor people across the state, especially women, children, the aged, they be considered and government be kind enough to give such kind of attention to the roads that I have already mentioned and also to the ones that need their attention, sir. So with these few submissions, sir, I resume my seat, sir. Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, thank you so much for giving me this uh, opportunity to participate in this uh, short duration discussion relating to the issues concerning the degradation of roads, uh, traffic management, and non-compliance of transport laws in the state. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I do not know where to begin. When we talk of traffic congestion in the city, it is madness, particularly in the morning sun. It is also a madness to see the way the roads are choked All the roads coming to the city, if I may say, the road coming from Upper Shillong, if I may say, the road coming from Maoyong to the city, or the road coming from Maoglei to the city. Sir, it is really a concern. It is a concern not just of the MLAs here. I stand here today to voice 
the concerns of the people of the state and particularly of the people of Shillong. So I'm a rural MLA. I leave my home in the morning to go to my constituency in Mausanram area. I stay in Risa Colony and the moment I hit the main road in Dhankheti, my anxiety starts from there, sir. The anxiety is because there is so much of traffic jam, sir. Right from Dhankiti, as we move on till we cross Lat Maureng, we just have to follow the queue of the vehicles. So the traffic movement along the upper Shillong area up to the junction near the helipad is always blocked. Sir. Be it while going early in the morning or when I return back late in the, at night, sir. I feel bad to see people stuck in the jam, sir. Even at 11 o'clock at night, when I return back from the constituency, I see people, women, families, children, everybody are stuck in the jam, sir. Now, who do we blame, sir? I do not want to point a finger at anyone here. But I feel that it is the responsibility of the government of the day to smoothen the flow of the traffic, to ensure that the families who want to go back home from Shillong to all the outlying villages, they reach home on time. And also for the people who have gone out from Shillong to come back home on time. It's sad to see how big trucks, they try to negotiate the uphill roads of Upper Shillong and in the process, a whole line of cars, kilometers down, they just have to follow that truck. Again, while we come back, you would see lines of trucks. I would not say what they carry. It is up to the department people to find out what these trucks carry. Do I know what they carry? I would not like to spell out here. These trucks, they're so overloaded, sir, that they cannot negotiate the slope while coming down to Shillong. And again, the agony starts for all of us to have to follow these trucks. We are not VIP where we can use sirens and we have pilots and escorts where you can easily just move through from the middle. And to add on, sir, to the agony, these trucks, they overturn because there are potholes along the highway, sir. So what more agony can you expect than this, sir? I do not see one single traffic policeman handling the traffic, nor do I see any transport enforcement officials checking this overloading or checking the documents of these trucks. I want to ask a question. Is there any time limit for these trucks to move in and move out of the city? Why have the government not or the department concerned not kept a particular timing for these trucks to move in and move out of the city? Right now, so we see trucks are moving in even at the day, in the morning, at night. And they are the main cause of the traffic jam in the city, sir. 
So vehicles coming from Sora, from West Castle Hills, from South West Castle Hills, they're all facing the same problem. And vehicles are coming from Mausundram area. Everybody is facing this. And sir, Mausundram to Shillong, we have to reach, we normally reach in two hours. And now we reach in four hours. Four hours is minimum, sir. Sir, I understand that the government had proposed for widening of the road from Um Sharpi up to Maukriya Alat Maureng. And we were very happy to see that the work had just got started. It got stalled because of certain objections to the cutting down of the trees. And even that got removed and the work had just started. Suddenly we see all the work of widening the Upper Shillong Road has stopped. I tried to inquire. When I inquired, I learned that it was the fault of the PWD department for not handing over the land to the contractor. Now, how can a tender be called and handed over to a company when the land was not ready? The land acquisition process took a lot of time. And eventually what happened? The contractor, he packed up and he left. And sir, there was an agreement signed by the contractor and the government that if you cannot hand over the land within the specified time, you are liable to pay me in full. And yes, that exactly happened, sir. This company who came to construct that road has taken away our money without doing any work. Whose fault is that? Sad, sir, the way that things are happening and the way the people just got away with our money without doing the work. So we look for people coming from Gohati. Now we do have friends who come from Assam. Then they say, yes, while driving from Gohati up to Maulai, Maoyong, it is so pleasant because the road is so good. On reaching Maoyong, they get completely stuck. And they take another two hours from Maoyong to reach their home in Shillong. Now, this is the state of affairs that is happening, sir, now. So you can ask any person on the road, anybody on the road, so they will, they have one word that they're fed up of the traffic jam. Now, if, suppose there is a meeting or there is a church gathering or whatever, so they cannot be on time anymore. People have very easy reasons to say and blame it on the traffic. So I feel sorry for the parents every morning when they go to drop their children to school. Sir. And most of the schools are located around the Allied Umkra area. Sir. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, you should see the situation of the traffic in the morning from 7.30 to 9.30, the whole Light Umkhara area is choker block. I do not see any solution to this. And we look forward for solutions. We did find one superintendent of police of the traffic standing in the police point and trying to show directions to the cars. But that was just a gimmick. What could that SP do? The size of the roads are the same. The direction is the same. But the number of vehicles are increasing day by day. We do not see any blueprint from the government. No road map of what do they want to do how do they want to ease the traffic congestion in the city? I always see anxiety and anger in the face of these parents 
when they drive to school to drop their children in the process many of the parents they have to shout at their children they have to beat their children to get out of the house early so that you can reach the school on time anxiety starts from home when you do not want to get angry in the morning you want to be sober and good in the morning you can't help it because there is a traffic waiting and you have to beat your child to say get ready be fast in the car so that we have to reach the school on time this is happening in every home so now i have one more observation sir once the siren goes at 10 o'clock you would see the whole road from sp office up to police bazaar bara bazaar completely blocked while going completely blocked one day i got caught in the jam for more than half an hour sir in the dc's office in front of the dc's office i had no option but to call up the sp traffic to find out what is wrong where then he says sir my hands are tied i cannot do anything because these red buses are all going towards bara bazaar after dropping the office goers they said that why can't you keep these red buses somewhere said no sir we cannot stop it belongs to the association and they have to go to bara bazaar now sir if you go on that road every morning you would see i don't know how many buses are there the red buses they all line up to go to bara bazaar now who is managing the traffic in the city where is the management of traffic in the city only the common man understands the pain suddenly you see hundreds and hundreds of two wheelers coming up in the city men women everybody is driving with two wheelers now because they want to reach faster to their destination sir i do not know where are we leading to so most schools do not have even parking areas you look at st mary's you look at st edmunds you look at st anthony's they do not have parking spaces so what do the parents do they have to park on the road to go and drop their children where is the policy of the pool buses we have heard the government making statements that we are going to bring pool buses and when are those pool buses going to be introduced on the road we heard the chief minister saying we are going to buy 60 buses where are the buses what is the district administration doing we would like to know how long are we going to face this it is really a pain to see how the traffic constables are trying to man the roads of the city the police traffic constables are being assisted by the home guard personnel and deputy speaker sir do you know the plight of this home guard traffic personnel they have not been paid since the month of march and yet they performing duty on the road in shillong this is the plight of the home guard traffic personnel on the road in shillong they do not have a single penny in their pocket and yet they are performing their duties sir i do not know what is the home guard department doing why the home guard department has not paid who will work without pay sir i would like to also say about the condition of the roads now so the condition of the roads are bad in the rural areas they are bad in the highway can you take a drive sir to jowai from moran kening up to jowai the road is so bad sir it's a highway now this highway we used to be so proud of that we have such good highways in our state but what has happened to this condition of the road why this road has not been repaired till date this is the reason for traffic congestions 
Accidents be are becoming frequent because of the condition of the roads, sir. And the trucks, they overturn because they overloaded. I would like to draw the attention of the transport minister here. How many pollution test stations do you have in the state functioning right now? I would like an honest answer from the transport minister. How many pollution test stations are there that are really functional in the city and in the state? Sir, I'll inform you today, sir, that the Department of Transport had called an advertisement for setting up of the pollution test stations. Now, there were a lot of applicants. They fulfilled all the criteria. They have given whatever required, the documents, this, that. And they fulfilled the criteria, and they were supposed to be given their appointment order. Till date, the transport department has not issued any appointment letter to these pollution test station. Why? Why do we have to swallow and take in all the black fumes of these trucks while we follow them? How many trucks, how many vehicles have been tested by these pollution test stations? What is the enforcement branch of the transport department doing? And how many vehicles have they inspected? Many vehicles applying without valid documents. I would like to know how many vehicles traveling without valid documents have been penalized throughout the state. So the traffic management, the traffic situation in the city and in the state has become to a state where the high court had to intervene, sir. The High Court had to intervene. The Honorable High Court, sir, has directed the state government to come up with a blueprint, to come up with a roadmap as to how they want to bring a change where the traffic scenario is concerned, sir. And also, the High Court has made a series of suggestions to the government, including exploring of idea of having ropeways, cable cars as a long-term solution, sir. Honorable member, please shorten your speech. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. So therefore, sir, I am equally concerned like any citizen of the state, sir, about the traffic scenario in the state. And we expect that the state government will come up with a series of blueprint, series of recommendations how to solve and to sort out this traffic congestion in the city. They may constitute committees, they may constitute experts to give them the suggestions so therefore, sir, we would not like to see any more anxieties, any more angers on the drivers who drive along the roads of our town, sir. So with these few words, sir, I would like to thank you and I resume my seat.